everybody, Rob and Jonas here to show you how to take photos like this. Here, Jonas, you gotta get this. Can I put it on my finger? Yeah, absolutely. This put, put little finger. insect. <laughs> put your finger on the jar edge. <laughs> Oh, shoot. shoot, shoot it off. dropped, okay. We are now in the forest entomology lab here at the University of Florida, and we are gonna take photos of the emerald ash borer. Emerald ash borer, how you will never see it with your naked eye. And there is a whole technique that goes into it, um, but that's why we're here with the experts. Andrew and Yuri here are bark beetle experts. Before we got to our insect, we wanted to get a feel for the size of what they deal with day to day. What's the first step? The first you can't take a picture of a live one. Yeah, unfortunately these things, they're so tiny and you need, you need to take these composite images which are stacked okay. with lots of different images. It takes roughly half an hour to take one photo. So there's no way you can get these beetles to stay still enough right. if they're alive. So they definitely okay. need to be dead to take a photo of them. So let's do this. Step one. We'll just follow you. To explain this, we've broken down their technique into five components, which we'll go through one at a time. And like all the techniques we teach in 52 Things, our estimate of time in this one is two hours, although they can do each insect in about 30 minutes. The cost, if you have a microscope and a DSLR, is only about $20 for the stitching program and about 100 bucks or so for the connector to the DSLR. But I wanna emphasize stacking like this is totally possible without the higher end gear. So we hope you can take away a lot from this guide, even if they are using a very expensive microscope. The first thing I wanna show you is their setup. There are multiple reasons why this is different than what most people in entomology use. This is not a binocular scope, which has two different axes for the light that allows you to see the bug in 3D. This one doesn't, it just has one axis, just goes up and down. For the photos that we need to take, that's better because the beetle doesn't appear to be turning slightly as you uh, go in and out. It makes it much easier to stack the images then. The other important part is that these objectives have a long working distance. They're called metallurgic objectives. So you can actually stick the pin with the bug underneath them. Normally, you would only look at slides, you know, glass slides with a little piece of tissue on a scope like that. But with these objectives, you can go away a little bit from the pedestal and actually put a bug underneath. Those are also fairly decent objectives. They're fluoride objectives, so there are no halos and rainbows and that kind of stuff. And then we have a DSLR attachment here with an adapter that you can just stick a good camera to. And the other thing is uh, it sits on a really nice table made of uh, marble, it's heavy solid wood and it's on rubber legs because buildings move, buildings shake. When you walk here or when there's an AC going on, everything shakes a little bit. And you will really see that in magnification like that. How far down can you go? How far down? Oh, one cell. I'm used to hearing um, how you have to coat them with gold and stuff ah. to take the electron, electron microscopes, right? Yeah. But this seems like you can take Excellent the same point. Details. We can send, take the same detail with color in 3D with no gold coating and that kind of stuff. When I started school, that was one of the things I was dreaming of doing, getting all kinds of bugs, taking pictures of their eyes and stuff with a scanning electron microscope, hearing this stuff, man, it's pretty amazing. One other thing is that the photo as it comes out from a setup like that is actually better than what you as a person would be able to see with any microscope. Because the microscope doesn't have that depth of field. Even that, that doesn't have the depth of field and that binocular scope, while it has depth of field, it doesn't have that detail. That allows you to join both. You have incredible detail and by stitching all these layers, you end up on the computer screen having the depth of field. But you can never really see an animal like that, real time with your own eyes. It has to be recreated. How many photos are we talking about? Between 40 and 70. Next step is prepping the animal. Well, one of our goals is to tell the world that these beetles are beautiful. And so if they're covered with grossness, it's pretty important. This process entails taking the dust and hair off of them, either with a small paper dabbed in ethanol, or putting a thin layer of Elmer's glue on a pin, applying it to their backs, waiting three seconds for it to dry, and then slowly pulling it off. This makes it pretty. Um, 
it just becomes really ugly when it's covered in lots of bits of dust. It's not critical for sure, and certainly if it was a really valuable specimen, like a historic type or something, I probably wouldn't even do this. It's such a pretty beetle. It's beautiful colours and the purples and the greens. It can be really ruined if there's a hair that just like goes over the top of it or... The cleaning, like you mean? That. Yeah. Oh, the cleaning, from aesthetic point of view, that's super important because you amplify not only the beetle, but the specks of dust. And those are hairs, you know, those are pieces of gunk. And when you see them thousand times magnified, they're pretty ugly and they totally detract from the beauty of the beetle. So many details that you just never see with the naked eye, yeah? This beetle looks nice, but sometimes it's important to straighten the legs and the antennae because dead insects can look really crazy. Like, you know, the how they died in the spasm of death when you drop them in ethanol and they suddenly uh, go crazy. That's how they die. And it turns out that often people like the bug, but they don't like the legs. So from a taxonomic perspective, it's fine. In fact, desirable to show everything. From an aesthetic perspective, it's fine to tuck them in a little bit. Next is lights and diffusion. If you have bad light, it really makes horrible refraction patterns and makes it impossible to actually see anything. I'm going to use vellum, which is that kind of translucent stuff you use to make cards of wedding invitations and stuff. I'm going to place it around the beetle. And that really transforms how it looks. The diffuser is there to make the light come from many angles all around the insect, like an ambient glow rather than two specific points. Because then all you would get is this harsh reflection of, the two, of these two specific points. It's ugly. Now, taking the images. This bug is huge for this. I can't even see, I can't see anything. To take these images, they use the built-in EOS utility on the computer. They'll snap a photo, adjust the focus, snap a photo, adjust the yeah. focus, and repeat for something like 50 shots. <laughs> All right, and the final thing is stacking them, and that requires a special program. The stacking program they use is called Helicon Focus. The program is inexpensive and will let you drop in every image, click a single button, and then it automatically stacks them all together. That's Look at like, that. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at the antenna. But this is only really scratching the surface of the capabilities of this microscope. So we can zoom in and show you individual the individual eyes. The and these guys take a lot of photographs of some really, really tiny stuff. Everybody, thanks for watching. A big thanks to our patrons who are allowing us to do some of this educational content. And a big thanks to this lab who is doing all this amazing stuff and allowing us to make a video on the emerald ash borer. Links to all of that below. Stay tuned, we'll see you next time. This is hard. Usually I don't have to man two cameras, focus on a 100 millimeter long lens as well as filming the setup while these guys are shooting. That's actually really difficult plus checking the audio of two cameras at the same time. Whew, that was hard.